The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is an instant classic of a sequel, and as the name suggests, masks are a major focus of the game. You use masks to gain new abilities, transform, and otherwise progress through the game, and you can't beat the game without using them. But is that really the case? In this video I'm gonna find out, and try beating Majora's Mask without ever using masks. The rules are simple. First, and most obviously, the main rules to avoid using masks at all. From the very start of the game to the very end of it, I can never equip a mask for any purpose. Second, I'm going to try and complete all four of the game's temples under these rules, but if skipping a temple would allow me to skip using a mask, then that's the priority. Basically, I want to do as much as possible without using masks. Those are the only two rules. As long as I never use a mask, everything's fair game. So let's get started. After giving my character the canon name, he got robbed in a forest. As soon as I gained control of Link, I farmed rupees in this area for a few minutes until I got up to 99. Money is helpful throughout the game, so I thought it made sense to grab some before the 3 day timer got started. After running forward a bit, Link encountered Skull Kid, who put a curse on him that turned him into a Deku. This isn't a mask, so we're still safe. This Deku form is an actual curse until you play the Song of Healing later to turn it into a mask. So essentially, once I get rid of the Deku form, I can never go back, and I'll be a human for the rest of the game. I played through the first cycle like normal. I got magic, played with the bombers, and got the deed that would let me get up to the clock tower. There are glitches you can do to skip parts of this, but I decided to just do it like normal. Once I finished everything I had to, I grinded for some more rupees. Once the final hours arrived, I headed up the clock tower, got back the Ocarina of Time, and returned to the dawn of the first day. After going back to the dawn of the first day, I immediately had to jump into action. I made a route of exactly what I wanted to do. I started by playing the inverted Song of Time the second the cycle began. This slows down time, making it easier to fit everything in. Right away, there was one big problem that had to be addressed. The game's first temple, Woodfall Temple, can only be accessed if you're a Deku. So if I were to turn back into a human right now as the game expects, then I would never be able to get into the temple, because I wouldn't be able to use the Deku Mask. However, you're also not supposed to be able to leave Clock Town without turning back into a human. So basically, I had to find some way to leave Clock Town, get to Woodfall, open the temple, and make it back, all before turning back into a human. I started by withdrawing money from the bank to get the bomb bag, which can hold 20 bombs, and bought 20 bomb chews as well, for a total of 40 explosives. On the night of the first day, you can do a quest that lets you buy a bigger one, but I was going to have a use for bombs before that point on this cycle so I bought this smaller bag for now. Then I headed to East Clock Town. The guard blocks the exit if you're a Deku, but if I go up against this wall and then backwalk, I'm able to very easily get past him. This let me get to Termina Field without turning back into a human. From here, I rushed over to the swamp. In this area, you have to get a potion from the shop here, which gives you a bottle. Then you can use the potion to help a lady in the woods, who gives you a boat ride to Deku Palace. Until you ride the boat, the way to the palace is blocked by big octos, which prevents you from getting through. But the potion shop won't give the bottle to a Deku, meaning there's supposed to be no way to get past the big octos and move forward. But that wasn't gonna stop me. I went to this spot in front of the big octo, and stood on this flower. Then I got this Octorok to shoot a rock at me, and spun just before it hit Link, which pushed him back a bit. Then you mash A and count up to 5 spins, then side hop off to the left. The Octorok should shoot another rock just about when Link drowns, which freezes it in the air and puts you back on the flower. Then you immediately side hop back off, and hold up on the control stick into the rock. This sends you flying backwards with a lot of momentum. You go too fast for the big Octo to grab you. Then you have to aim yourself to land on the middle lily pad in the cave, and then head out the other side of the cave. There's another big octo there, but this one shoots you in the direction you want to go. And just like that I reached Deku Palace. I entered the palace and spoke to people inside. Then I rushed back out and flew over to this stone tablet on a cliff nearby, which taught me the Song of Soaring. The Song of Soaring lets you fast travel to owl statues you've hit, but since I had hit none of them, you'd think the song would be useless but the fact that I hadn't hit any of them was actually incredibly crucial for reasons that I'll explain a little later on. Now, this was actually where the playthrough hit a weird point. After getting the Song of Soaring, I went back to the palace and got the magic beans. My plan was to plant these, then wait for day two so it started raining, which would make them grow, allowing me to get to the Sonata of Awakening, the song I needed to open up Woodfall Temple. But apparently, Deku Link actually can't use magic beans, which meant my entire plan went up in smoke. I needed to get this song to open the temple, and the way you do that is by planting magic beans here. I tried to think up a solution, but I couldn't come up with anything. And so, I put the game down for a while to think. How long? 
Well, long enough that I made an entire video on its predecessor. But I couldn't come up with a solution. So eventually, I decided to reach out to the Majora's Mask speedrunning Discord, and explained my situation to them. And two users, ZunarSR and Indigo Teddy, helped me out. While I'm at this point, I want to give a thank you to ZunarSR, Indigo Teddy, Pushy Misumi, Turkenheimer, and Majora1176 from the Majora's Mask speedrunning Discord, for helping me out with various questions I had throughout the playthrough. So it turns out that I was on the right track, but instead of getting the magic beans, I entered the palace's left room. Here, I went into this corner, then went into first person mode and lined up like this. Then I held down the target button so I could move Link while keeping this angle. I walked around the wall to his left until he was in this corner, and then back walked into it at top speed. Then I started pausing repeatedly. In both Zelda games on the Nintendo 64, you can pause repeatedly to perform something called pause buffering, which basically allows you to advance the game a single frame at a time to pull off glitches and tricks that require you to be frame perfect. My goal was to continue back walking into this corner, release the target button, press A a single frame later to spin, and then release the control stick a short while after. This allowed me to clip inside the wall. Once inside, I backflipped to end up on top of it, and then ran to the end of it and backflipped onto the door frame. Then I backflipped off of there and back down to the ground. That might seem like a pointless move, but jumping from the door frame put me close enough to this enemy for it to become active and start shooting. It's usually not active when you're down here. Then I went to the end of the room and backflipped onto that door frame. Since the enemy was now shooting at Link, I was able to backflip off the door frame with good timing, and one of the enemy's shots hit him in midair, which knocked him onto this wall. Now I was high enough to backflip over to this moving platform. And from there, I could use the Deku Flowers to fly over to this entrance, which led to the Sonata of Awakening. And so, after several months, I finally got it. And just in case you want proof that I'm not messing with you here, here's me pausing immediately after being thrown out of the Sonata of Awakening cutscene. As you can see, no masks. Next, I headed back to the area where I got the Song of Soaring. I floated over to Woodfall, and after navigating through it, I reached this pad. I played the Sonata of Awakening on it, and opened the temple. However, you can't complete this temple as a Deku, so I had to go back to Clock Town and turn back into a human. But there was a problem. You'll remember that to get to this area in the first place, I had to take damage from an Octorox shot, which sent Link flying backwards with enough momentum to get past the big Octo. However, on the Deku Palace side of the swamp, those enemies don't exist, so I couldn't do the same trick to get back to the other side. And of course, even though I had learned the Song of Soaring, I hadn't hit any of the statues yet. So to get back, I hopped back down to Deku Palace, and then hopped back up to the area I was just in. This was so that I could enter it from the other side, where these big dragonfly enemies started following me. Then I had to float back to where I just was, but I had to leave one of these enemies alive. By doing this, I had now brought a damage source with me that I could use to get momentum to get past the big Octo. It's quite similar to what I did earlier. Once the dragonfly was close, I got a specific angle, then fell off the ledge and drowned. While I was bouncing on the water, I wanted to stay not too close to the dragonfly and not too far. Drowning put me back on the ledge, where Deku Link now got hit by the enemy, and using this momentum, I can get sent flying backwards and past the big Octo. I ran back to Clock Town and entered the Clock Tower, where Link turned back into a human. The Deku Mask fell from Link's face, and it would never be returning. And with that, Link was now a human for the rest of the game. Now I had to wait until around midnight of day one. I wanted to get the upgraded bomb bag before I took on Woodfall Temple, and to do that, I had to stop a thief in North Clock Town at midnight. I had some things I wanted to take care of before that happened, so I got to work. First, I headed to South Clock Town. There's an owl statue here, so if I were to hit this, I could warp to this statue with the Song of Soaring, letting me fast travel to Clock Town. When you go into West Clock Town, you can see this same owl statue in the distance. This is done to give the illusion that it's the same one, but this statue in West Clock Town is actually a perfectly functioning, unique owl statue, completely different from the one in South Clock Town. However, it's normally inaccessible. It's behind the loading zone that leads into South Clock Town, so I had to get over to the statue some other way. I started by activating the infinite sword glitch. When you stab with your sword and interrupt it with certain other actions, like reading a sign or grabbing a bomb, then you'll be permanently attacking with your sword until you do certain other actions, like slashing the sword again yourself. This glitch has some other effects. If you backflip into a bomb's explosion while shielding, you'll float in midair. So using this trick, you can gain height infinitely, at least until you run out of explosives. Using this glitch, I hovered my way out of bounds, and then navigated around the loading zone to South Clock Town and jumped back inbounds to get down to the statue. Then I slashed at it to activate it. Normally when you activate an owl statue, it adds that specific statue to your Song of Soaring list, allowing you to teleport to that statue when you play the song. 
so over the course of the game, you can fast travel to more and more places that you've already been to. But the only owl statue I'd activated was this fake one, and since you're never supposed to be able to get to it, there's no teleport destination assigned to it. What does that accomplish? Well normally, when you haven't hit any statues yet, the game will tell you that when you play the Song of Soaring, and you won't be able to go anywhere. But since I have hit an owl statue, the game doesn't bring up that text, but it also doesn't know where to send me since I haven't hit any real statues. And since the Song of Soaring map and the pause screen map use similar data, I can pause the game, hover over an area on the map, then play the Song of Soaring to get sent to an area I've never been to before. And once I teleport to a new area, that obviously adds that new area to my map. So I can hover over that one in the pause screen, then play the Song of Soaring again, and now I'll get sent to a new place when I play it. Essentially, within 10 minutes of warping around, I unlocked the ability to fast travel to just about every single owl statue in the game. This included ones like the owl statue at the top of Stone Tower, which meant that when I did Stone Tower Temple later on, I could skip the entire climb to the top of the tower. Also, at a few points, by traveling on foot just a little bit from where I ended up, I could add another destination to my map. For example, when I ended up at Stone Tower, I very smoothly jumped off and grabbed onto the ledge of the entrance, which let me add Iconic Canyon to my map. Also, whenever you enter a new area, the map value gets reset, and it defaults to Great Bay, which let me get there too. I also warped back to Clock Town along the way, and deposited money into the bank to get the expanded wallet, letting me hold 200 rupees instead of 99. After getting the map filled out, I warped to Southern Swamp. I went to the forest and found one of the potion ladies, then went to the shop and got a bottled potion to heal her with. After using it, I now had an empty bottle, which I was going to need much later on in the game. Now I had about 6 hours to kill, so I decided to farm for some rupees. As you can probably tell, explosives are crucial, so having a lot of money so I could easily restock them felt like a good idea. I went to North Clock Town at around 11.15, and stopped the thief when he tried to rob the lady from the bomb shop. The lady gave me the blast mask, which I obviously couldn't use, but more importantly, after withdrawing some money from the bank, I was now able to go to the shop to buy a bigger bomb bag, increasing my bomb capacity from 20 to 30. This applies to bomb chews as well, meaning I went from a maximum of 40 explosives to a maximum of 60, which was pretty good. Unfortunately, to get the final bomb bag upgrade, you have to use the Goron Mask, so 60 was going to be my maximum for the rest of the game. I filled up my bomb chews after buying the bag, and then I withdrew a little more money to grab Deku Sticks at the shop. Then I warped over to Woodfall. It was finally time to take on the first temple. From the platform, I hovered over to the temple. In the first room, I jumped down to the ground, backflipped up onto one of the trees, climbed up to the top, then performed a hover from there to the door. As you can probably tell, bomb hovers break this dungeon wide open. In the very next room, I hovered over to a switch you're supposed to access much later on. Then in the very next room, I headed right and fought this mini boss. Just two jump slashes took it out, and that got me the bow. Back in the previous room, I hovered over to the northern exit, where I fought another mini boss. Using the bow I defeated it, which got me the boss key. And then, back in the second room, using the bow I lit the torches, which got me access to another room. And in there I hovered my way over to the boss door. And just like that, I'd made it to the boss without getting the dungeon map, without getting the compass, without even going to the second floor, and of course, without using any masks. The boss itself was easy enough. No masks are supposed to be necessary for it on a regular playthrough, so the fight went just the same as ever. And when I won, I got a fourth heart container, and got the first set of remains. After learning the Oath to Order, I ended up back in Woodfall Temple. The second dungeon is in the Snowhead region, but I wanted to restart the cycle before I got to work on that, so I decided to take care of a few things in the two days I still had left on this cycle. I warped over to Great Bay. There, I headed over to the wall near the Pirate's Fortress. To get into the Pirate's Fortress, you need to break the barricade over the entrance as Azora. But instead, I hovered all the way up this wall to get on top of it. The infinite sword glitch prevents you from falling off ledges, so once I got up, I walked as far as I was able to on this corner. Then using first person mode, I aimed Link at the loading zone below, turned around, and shielded to cancel the infinite sword glitch. Then, without moving, I pulled out a bomb, and just before it exploded, I backflipped, shielded, and then released the control stick. Since the infinite sword glitch was off, instead of hovering, this sent Link flying backwards with a lot of speed, sending him down to the loading zone below and letting me get inside. Once inside the fortress, I swam to the ground near the entrances, and then hovered across the gap to get inside. From there, I navigated my way up to the platform just below the bridge, and hovered my way up to it. This let me enter the room with the hookshot. Since I had the bow, I was able to knock down a beehive to get rid of the pirates, which let me get my hands on the hookshot way earlier than I was supposed to. I didn't have any other plans in the fortress, so I warped back to Clock Town. 
My next destination was the town shooting gallery. By beating the high score here, I was able to upgrade my quiver to hold 40 arrows instead of 30. Then I headed to the swamp, where I played the swamp shooting gallery to upgrade my quiver to the maximum size of 50 arrows. With that, I was done with everything I had been planning to do on the first cycle. I deposited my money into the bank, and then played the Song of Time, finally capping off the most meticulously planned Majora's Mask cycle I've ever done. My destination now was Snowhead Temple. Snowhead Temple has a huge gore on that blows wind that sends you flying, making it impossible to get anywhere close to the temple. To solve this, you're supposed to do some stuff using the Goron Mask, which gets you a lullaby song, which you can play to put the Goron to sleep. But since I can't use the Goron Mask, I had to find another way in. So instead, I warped to Great Bay Coast. Once there, I headed for the Fairy Fountain. Inside, I initiated a hover and got up onto the pillars, and from there I hovered over the wall and out of bounds. Every single Fairy Fountain in the game is actually placed within the same map in the game's files. What this means is that after hovering out of the Great Bay Fairy Fountain a little bit, I was able to end up in the Snowhead one. It's invisible, but it's there, and it's quite close to the dungeon. But this didn't mean I was in the clear yet. As I mentioned earlier, there's a Goron that blows you away if you try to get up here before playing the lullaby. And here's what happens if you leave the Fairy Fountain. So here's what I had to do. Immediately after exiting the fountain, I had to turn towards the screen and activate the infinite sword glitch using a bomb. Like I mentioned before, the infinite sword glitch prevents you from falling off ledges. So once it was active, I was safe from being pushed off the ledge by the wind. The timing here is very tight, but I eventually managed it. Once you do it, you want to hold Z and R together to shield while targeting. If you shield without targeting, then you cancel the infinite sword glitch, but holding both lets you shield the bomb's explosion without canceling the glitch. Once the bomb is gone, you can start working your way forward. The glitch prevents you from being pushed off ledges, but doesn't stop you from being pushed around on the ground, so you can be blown around here. What you want to do is walk forward a little bit, then run at the ledge so you kind of get wedged in there, which will prevent the wind from blowing you back. Sometimes you can get stuck in place, so just side hop out when the wind isn't blowing, and then keep running forward. This works for a little bit, but then you reach a point where even if you wedge yourself on the ledge, you still get blown back to a certain point. At this point, you want to go in a first person mode, turn away from the ledge, and aim it so that the top left corner of the letter R in the word return is touching this little platform up here. Then you leave first person mode, turn around, and pull out a bomb. The bomb flashes between red and blue. On the third red flash, I started pause buffering until the bomb went back to blue for two frames. Then I unpaused, pressed Z, R, A, and down on the control stick to backflip while targeting and shielding, then continued pause buffering while holding Z, R, and down on the stick. I continued doing this until Link's shield was directly facing the screen, where I then started holding up on the control stick instead. Then I continued pause buffering until the first frame where Link's feet touched the ground, and then I mashed A. This sent Link flying backwards at a fast speed. The wind still tried to blow him away, but as soon as it stopped he continued blasting down the path. I kept this going until Link ended up in this little corner, where he was now safe from being pushed away again. I waited until a blow was just about to finish, then climbed up onto the ledge. Climbing up ledges cancels the infinite sword glitch, so I had to immediately activate it again, but once I did, I had secured my route into the temple. This is the path that leads into the temple itself. The only thing you really need to watch out for are these snowballs. At the end of the path, there's a part that can be a little tricky to time, but you basically want to wait around here until the wind stops blowing, then run at this point so you get caught on this ledge when it blows again, and from there you can run inside. And just like that, I made it in without the lullaby, and without even the Goron mask itself. In the very first room, there's a big block you're supposed to push as a Goron, but all you have to do to get past it is side hop into it like this. In the room with the blowing ice statues, I was able to do a simple trick to get through. If you put a bomb behind you, then turn away from it to look towards a ledge and hold down Z, when it explodes you'll get a jump that goes way farther than normal. This allowed me to clear the gap without hovering. Since I had the hookshot, it was fairly easy to breeze through the dungeon as I liked. When I eventually reached the center room with the bridges, the bomb jump trick I mentioned at the start of the dungeon let me jump between them, which let me get to the mini boss that gives you the fire arrows. After getting the arrows, I hopped across to another bridge, then used the arrows to open the way to the next floor. Once on the next floor, I shot a fire arrow at a snowball across the way, then hovered my way across. Once there, I used bombs to clear out the rest of the snowballs, and climbed the stairs up to the top floor. And once I was there, it was another simple hover across the gap to reach the boss door. I didn't have the boss key, but fortunately, I didn't need it. I got into this corner by the door, and then I went into first person mode. I lined up so that the rounded top part of the clock fit within the door frame I could see ahead. 
Then I pulled out a bomb, held down Z to target, and waited until it was just about to explode. Right as it exploded, I held down shield and tapped left and A to side hop to the left, and the bomb's explosion pushed Link backwards through the wall. Then I held up right on the control stick, and Link jumped out of bounds and ended up in the loading zone behind the door. Next up was the dungeon boss, Goat. To win this fight, you're supposed to use the Goron Mask to chase Goat around, slamming into him to deal damage. But that's actually not necessary at all, and I think the footage pretty much speaks for itself. I grabbed the heart container, grabbed the remains, and saved Snowhead from being snowy. Unfortunately, since I can't use the Goron Mask, even though the Snowhead area is peaceful again, I can't get the Gilded Sword. With that done, I only had two temples left. It had only taken me until just after 12pm on day 1 to complete Snowhead, so I decided to just stay on this cycle. That way, I could keep the explosives and arrows I still had, and could just top them up before going to the next temple. I warped back to Clock Town and topped them both up using money from the bank. Next, I was supposed to head to Great Bay Temple, but I decided instead to not do that, for reasons I'll explain a little later on. I warped to Stone Tower. As you'll remember from earlier, since I activated the fake owl statue, I can warp right up to the top of Stone Tower without doing the climb. So being up here, I'd skipped the Mirror Shield and the Elegy of Emptiness, both of which are supposed to be required for puzzles inside the temple. But even if I did have them, the Elegy in particular requires you to use multiple masks to properly make use of it, so it was out of the picture either way. It would probably be easy enough to hover my way to the entrance, but in the interest of saving explosives, I performed a glitch called Time Stop instead. This was actually the main reason I picked up the bottle back in the swamp earlier. Using the bottle, I grabbed a fairy from a pot. This meant that Link now had a full bottle in his hand. Then I ran over to the switch on the right. This brought a platform over to me that I could easily jump to. I held down Z, and then shielded and immediately pressed the button for the bottle. This put the game into a glitched state. I could now get off the switch, but the platform stayed in place as if I was still on it. So then I just jumped onto the platform, and pressed C up to activate first person mode and cancel the glitch. This made the platform move again, and since I was on top of it, it brought me over to the other side. So I made it in without using any masks. Once inside, I headed for the door on the right. There was a block in my way, but it's easy to hover to the top of it, and then I can just jump off the other side to continue. Now in this room, there's a locked door that requires a key. Obviously, Zora Link could dive deep into the water here, but Human Link can't do that. Or so you would think. I activated the Infinite Sword glitch again, and then hovered over the water. Once I was in the air, I held a direction on the control stick, and then started mashing the button for the ocarina. This sent Link down to the ground at the bottom of the water. Once I put the ocarina away, Link started surfacing automatically, so from there I just directed him into the opening, and navigated it like normal. In the next room, the ledges were too tall for human Link to get out of the water, but the hand enemy could toss him up to solid ground. I grabbed the key, and then I had to go back the way I came. But since the hand enemy was in front of the opening, I activated the infinite sword glitch using a bomb right above it, so that the explosion simultaneously let me start my hover and defeat the enemy. Then I performed the dive glitch again, and headed back the way I came to open the locked door. In the next room, there was another block. Once again, a hover got me over, but there were some challenges doing them here. There are these little enemies that spawn consistently while you're in this room, so you have to defeat them, then initiate your hover quickly, before new ones can spawn and interrupt you. Then once you're hovering, you occasionally have to drop a bomb to the ground to defeat the enemies, then hold Z and R to shield the explosion without cancelling the infinite sword glitch. But you also have to hope that the enemies don't move around too much, because when you hold target, you lock onto one of them, which can ruin your angle if you're unlucky. But with enough patience I made it up. Once I was there, these weird enemies appeared, and they dropped bombs when they got defeated. I came in and out of this room a few times, so I could fill my bombs back up. In the next room, there are a bunch of wind gusts. You're supposed to use the Deku Mask to fly over them to get through this room, but once again, with a hover over the wall to the left, I could get around that. After that there was a mini boss fight that was no different from a regular playthrough, and with that, I got my hands on the light arrows. After that, I played the Song of Soaring to return to the entrance of the temple, then went outside and played it again to warp to the stone tower statue across the gap. Now that I had the light arrows, I had to hit a switch to turn the temple upside down, but it was behind the block I moved earlier. Of course, since I didn't have the Elegy of Emptiness, there was no way to keep the switch exposed, so I could hit it. 
However, by standing in a specific position next to the left switch, and then shooting an arrow and rolling onto the switch at almost the same time, I was able to move the block while the arrow was in midair, which meant it could hit the switch. As soon as I got inside, I headed down the left path. I positioned Link around the middle of the second line from the top of this ramp, then went into first person mode, and lined up so that the letter R in the word return was lined up with this thing in the distance. Then I put down a bomb, held Z and rolled forward, let go of Z, turned left and held Z again, and when the bomb went off, Link got propelled sideways. I held up on the control stick, and he grabbed onto a ledge in front of him. This is basically the same trick I used in Snowhead Temple, but sideways. Then I jumped over to a door. Now believe it or not, I was going to make it to the boss from this room. I started by walking up this ramp, and at the top of it, I aimed Link towards this platform in first person mode. Then I turned around, pulled out a bomb, and just before it exploded, I backflipped and shielded, and then immediately put the control stick to neutral. This sent Link flying backwards, letting me reach the platform with a single bomb. Once you reach this platform, make sure you break the pots at the back. After breaking the pots, I needed to get out of bounds in this room. Even though this place is upside down, if you hover below the room so that you're below the visible walls, there are actually still invisible walls that you can't get past. So instead, I had to clip out of bounds. I started by lining up Link around here, then started a hover so I ended up just below the ledge. Then I pulled out a bomb chew. When you're in a hover, the camera acts as if you're holding down Z to target, even if you're not. But if you actually target something with Z, you can release it to exit the targeting mode. So, I tapped R and A to shield the bomb chew and jump left, and tapped Z quickly while doing that to target the bomb chew in the brief moment it was out of my hands. This let me get out of targeting mode. I wanted to do this so I could change my angle. I held up left on the control stick slightly, then let the control stick go neutral, then tapped down and quickly pressed Z. This made Link change to looking this way. Now I could hover backwards, but under the platform, which put Link kind of inside this wall. I continued hovering below the platform until I clipped out of bounds, and then hovered out of bounds until a certain point, where I just fell into the loading zone for the boss room. And with that, I made it to the boss without the boss key, and without using any masks. The boss here is Twin Mold. Now, you might think that I would have to use the Giant's Mask to beat this, but that's actually not the case. You don't even need to use glitches or anything. Even in a regular playthrough where you get the mask, you can just beat Twin Mold using arrows. So that's what I did. I took out the first enemy, but ran out against the second one. I didn't feel like restarting the fight, so in an act of desperation, I decided to see where it came out of the ground, run for that point, and start spamming spin attacks, and hope that I would hit the tail as it emerged. I took a lot of damage, and even ended up dying and reviving using the fairy I'd picked up for the time stop glitch earlier, but this actually did eventually work, and did enough damage to finish it off. I got another heart container, and obtained the third set of remains. Now, the last dungeon was in Great Bay, but this was actually something of a strange point for the playthrough. In order to get to Great Bay Temple, you need to use a mask. Apparently, there are a few really crazy ways to get around it on some versions of the game, but on the Nintendo Switch version, there's no glitch you can do to get in. And I definitely wouldn't have been able to make it this far without the suspend points of the Switch version. At least with what's currently known about the game, this just isn't possible. However, that did not mean the challenge was over. If getting to Great Bay Temple was out of the picture, then I just had to find another way to make progress. I'd completed three of the four temples, but if getting to the fourth one without using masks wasn't possible, then my only option was to skip it and get to the final dungeon, the moon, without using masks. So I went back to Clock Town, deposited my rupees, reset time to the first day, stocked up on items, and then headed to the Deku Palace. Now, a lot of the stuff I'm about to say might seem completely random, but trust me, there's a point to it. My first goal was to get inside the palace. Once I was in, I entered the throne room and let myself get captured, which sent me back outside. Then I flipped my way back in. Next, I activated the infinite sword glitch by interrupting a stab by reading this sign. Once the glitch was active, I entered this room to load it, then exited, and then entered it again. On my second entrance, I pulled out a bomb and used it to hover up to a nearby platform. Then I backflipped from that platform to the top of the doorframe, and hovered from there to a higher platform above. Up here, I broke the pot closest to the door, and collected the magic jar it dropped, but I didn't break the pot closest to the wall. Then I got into this corner, 
backflipped, crouched, held right on the control stick, and stabbed the wall to recoil off it, then side hopped to the left, shielded, held up left on the control stick, and briefly released, and then shielded again, to get into a precise position. After doing all that, I went into first person mode, and adjusted a little bit so it was lined up like this. Then I dropped a bomb, held down Z and R to target and shield, walked down right until I hit this white line, and then went down a little further. Once the bomb started flashing quickly, on the second flash, I side hopped to the right, and then started mashing A. I paused immediately after this to make timing things easier. Link started sliding backwards, and I quickly released Z so he was just shielding. Then I let him go through the opening and out of the room a little, but released shield before he fell off the bridge. And after doing all of this, Link was now carrying an invisible object. Now I jumped off the bridge, and went into the room on the left. Once inside, I turned around, walked up to the doorframe, and held Z to target. This made Link face the wall perfectly. Then I backed away slightly, released Z, and very lightly tapped left on the control stick, so that Link performed a very tiny turn to the left. Then I held down Z again, walked Link over to this corner, held up left once he was in it, and then threw the invisible object. And after doing that, I went over to this guard specifically, and let myself get caught. And, with the most incredible power and aim in history, the guard threw me out of the palace and straight to the moon. I headed into the blue warp in front of me, and then ran for the tree and talked to the Majora's Mask kid. This began the final battle. Masks aren't supposed to be required here, so there's not too much to say, but there are some noteworthy things that came as a result of things I did across the journey. For example, since I never got the mirror shield, the beam attack in the first phase is really annoying. Normally, the mirror shield reflects it, but the regular shield does nothing against it. So I take damage even if I shield it. So I basically had to run away whenever it happened, which made the fight into a very long one. In the first phase, I knocked it down with spin attacks when it came down to the ground, then shot it with a light arrow once it was down. When it summoned the other enemies, I defeated them with regular arrows, before shifting focus back to the boss. The second phase was basically a joke. After you knock it down once, you can just spin attack repeatedly as it gets up, and you'll knock it down again before it gets away. So you can basically just stun lock the boss until it's down. In the final phase, my approach was basically to shoot an arrow, then run at the boss and jump slash at it. It was a very close fight, but after several attempts, I won with half a heart left. And with that, the adventure was over. You can indeed beat Majora's Mask without using masks. On the Switch version, you can't get to Great Bay Temple, but you can still complete all three other temples, make it to the moon, and defeat the final boss without ever using a mask. In case you're wondering, if you want to do Great Bay Temple, then you have to use the Zora Mask just once. You can get a Zora Egg as a human using a glitch, then use a duplication glitch to fill up the tank as if you got all of them. But then you have to turn into a Zora to learn the new wave Bossa Nova, and then you have to go to Zora Hall and play it to open up the temple, at which point you can take the mask off and complete the whole thing as a human. So there we go. You can beat the whole game without ever using masks, and if you're determined to complete every temple, then you can beat the whole game using masks only one single time. Apparently on some other versions of the game, like the Wii Virtual Console version, glitches like Light Node SRM and Grotto Overlay SRM might allow you to warp into Great Bay Temple, in a similar way to what I did with the Guard in Deku Palace, but I couldn't really tell you how they're done. But if you're interested in trying it yourself, then you could look into those. In any case, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.